click on this text, this procedure will be executed. And it can only be done if the operating system knows about this module and knows that it has a procedure of this. And the only way it can know that is if this module exports it. And that export is signaled to the compiler by the asterisk after the procedure name. And it calls the first module, Turing Code wind Window, set rules R1 and R2. So let's go back and look at set rules. Set rules. Begin exclusive. That's a that's a thread safety thing that we really don't want to think about. Begin exclusive. We don't want to deal with that right now. Okay. Uh, it basically says set it as these rules. Unset rules, set rules. First of all, we checked we're not being passed nil pointers as rules and then we set them. And it turns out if we do hand them nil pointers, they just goes back to using the default rules that are defined in this module. So it's very simple. This procedure, this, this module execution procedure that allows me to eject code from elsewhere into it, and this module never imports Turing Code 1. And in fact, Turing Code 1 does not export to anywhere, even to modules that import it, it doesn't export this procedure. But it calls into turn code window and injects that code. Let me show you how that works. Okay, let's get rise up and close. Turn one inject. I injected a change rule. So there's statically compiled code over here that just got injected into this module. Fascinating, you'll say. But even more interesting. Now, if we remember, you, we freed the original module and it shut down the window, it had to be started again. But I can easily change this to the square instead of the cube, recompile it, free it, and when I free it, this the module, it goes back to the original rules it was using because these pointers became nil. And now we inject so this is dynamic injection of statically compiled code. And what this shows you is of course that there really isn't a difference between static and dynamic code. It's just, you know, they're not Sui generis different. So you get some interesting patterns here. Uh, let's look. We have another module. In case we didn't want to go back to the original rules, we have another module. So we we can have pairs of rules that we can freeze separately and inject separately. This is just just the same. Turing two has different rules, still different rules, and it can inject itself. So, let's see. If I free this, it'll go back to using the default rules. But, but if I inject these rules, I can then free this rule and recompile it. So, the implications of this for the voxel renderer, the ray tracer, are perhaps you already see them. It, perfectly easily, in fact, it's, it's been done. I don't have it running right now in this demo. But this pattern could not be, in a, instead of being on a window and a screen, it could be mapped on the side of a voxel cube inside the ray traced world. And the behavior of that shader could be influenced by code that was statically compiled yet dynamically injected. And in fact, 
you could even do a framework that looked like an interpreted language. So you could even have a little window that, you know, we didn't have to bother about the name of the module, but a little window where you could compile anonymous functions and then inject them into places. As long as in, 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 in advance it's defined that, you know, this is the type of a procedure that is known. And you can redefine that and inject it. And so that's code injection in Oberon. And uh, just to remind everyone, let's go back and fly around in the box.